Hey, guys, I know I've been putting all my attention into ReZero, just studying that show like it's an exam, but that much is airing, and I do love this show as well. And my lack of knowledge and just the long time it's been since watching the past seasons is creating this gap of knowledge, which is making the reactions not the best it can be. Any News has a full recap, which is done in nine minutes. Nine minutes, and I'm not going to name that number because I got banned on that day. Let's see what he has to say. Let's get caught up with Danmachi. Okay. This is Bell, a naive yet determined adventurer who, in the dungeon city of Orario, strives to become stronger. That's right. Everything started when he was one day saved by Eyes, who within the city is looked up to as the sword princess. Eyes Valens, what's her name, what's it not? She kind of got benched. She like showed up in season one, was like main waifu candidate. And then she just started to play more minor roles. I remember there was like a really important scene in the end of maybe season two. Maybe it was somewhere in season two where we were kind of like lost and we went to a separate village and there was like this black dragon. Remember, there was some lore of like a black dragon and how that relates to Ice's past, which I'm sure is going to be super endgame. That black dragon also hints at doesn't like, um, what's his name? Apollo, the, the guy that's very cunning. There's a, there's a god that always wears a hat and acts like a clown, but he has like an endgame plan that he mentions sometime in season two and hinting like something about Zeus and how you, Hermes, yes, Hermes, Hermes, that's the one, yeah. And how the dragon is associated with Bell, that's going to be like the last hero or something. I forget that kind of like prophecy or lore. A famous adventurer from the incredibly powerful Loki. Apollo was the first arc of season two, right? The war god. Yeah, that, that one crazy. Familia. Bell himself is the sole member of the weak and broke Hestia Familia, we so broke. to see a warrior like her left- <laughs> Yeah, they were not trying to keep anything PG-13 back in the early days too, huh? <laughs> the fan service was this blatant from the fucking beginning! <laughs> Legitimately, how do I remember this shit? I breathe this anime, Joe. I love this shit. I don't know. I'm just a fucking nerd and isekai and this kind of like dungeon. I know this is not an isekai, but this might as well could be another isekai land if you had an insert other world or character. It's just, I love the lore. A very lasting impression on him. One so powerful that it actually becomes his entire motivation. Mm. So, with a newfound resolve to become as strong as her, Bell manifests. Yeah, then what does he do? Then he fucks off for each season picking another girl to pursue rather than ice. Ice will be returned to as the focus in probably like season 10 when it's like probably like that black dragon arc or something. It's a skill called Realis Freeze, which in essence makes him grow stronger faster. Okay. So long as he has a desire to catch up to Ice, his level of growth will skyrocket accordingly. Right. And um, so there's a specific mechanic here I need to mention, right? Hold up. So with a new wait, wait, wait. resolve to become as strong as her. Bell manifests a skill called Realis Freeze, which... Realis Freeze is the skill that lets him level up faster than anyone else? Because there's something special about this kid, right? Because, like, the span of, like, seasons 1 to 4 happens within, like, 2 months or something? Like, it's a really short time period. The concept of leveling up in this world, it takes a long, long time. That's why even a gap of one level is such, an, such a significant gap in power. But Bell... Yeah, le level two takes a year. Yeah, you saw Lily. Lily, finally season five. Lily went from level one to two. Same with Haruhime, right? Before, so before Bell, the record was one year. And now he, he just has like ultimate fast leveling skill. EXP boost, basically the passive. And then his stats don't hit like maximum proficiency as he levels up. Because like in season four, I remember, there's like this significant event where they hint at like Bell being more powerful sorry weaker than he should be because with each level everyone has so much time to raise their stats strength dex whatever right but because he's leveling up so fast we're kind of like really lagging behind on those stuff so right now even if bell doesn't level up he has so much more potential to grow right in essence makes him grow stronger faster so long as he has a desire to catch up to ice his level of growth will skyrocket accordingly. Yeah. This in turn gets him more involved in the dungeon, leading him to come across the supporter Lily. <laughs> Lily was so good back in the day, and now she's just a fucking D1 hater. I don't know why, but the author constantly puts her in a place of like, 
the voice of reason being like the person that always goes against the whims of the party and she gets shit on and I feel bad for her. A seemingly innocent prom at first until it's revealed she was actually just manipulating him. Mm -hmm. Things backfire and Lily ends up in trouble, resulting in Belle having to save her. But why would you save me? I backstabbed you! Cause I'm a dense motherfucker. So it's this act of compassion that makes Lily more fond of Belle, That's right. leading her to become his supporter for real. Fast forward through some training with eyes and an epic fight with the Minotaur and- That was the beginning. This was it, right? This is like the turning point for I think a lot of people watching Damachi. I remember just like, I was just like, I, I, I remember watching this episode a while back. I was just like eating food, just like not really caring. I was like, oh, a hype fight is happening. And then the fireball scene happened. I'm like, oh, oh my God. Oh, oh my God. Like this kid is fucking, just serious. So far, he was just like this innocent little bunny that he just kept yelling Firebolt. And then the soundtrack was so serious and epic. And at that point, I was like, ah, I see. So this is what Damachi can do. Belle would not only level up to level two, but also impress all who witnessed it. That's right. Everyone witnessed it too. Everyone was like a hater. This guy was like the biggest hater. And like, even he was like, oh shit, you really took down a fucking Minotaur? It was a stunning victory that attracted the attention of many. One that also- <laughs> Why is she so fucking down bad for Bell, bro? Like, what, what is up with you? Like, is it because he's just like an innocent child that you want to corrupt? Is it because he has such a powerful latent skill that lets him like level up faster? She is so down bad for Bell, and finally, it's seemingly like her season. Not quite, because it's- through Seer first, but Freya will be there during the, you know, the Fertility Harvest Festival, so like, what's she planning? One that also earned him the nickname Little Rookie. When did we get this armor? What the, what the fuck? Uh, it's like a fanfiction armor. It's after that the blacksmith Welf would join his That's party right. too, leading him, Belle, and Lily on an expedition together. The three would then run into trouble with another party. party and be forced to delve deeper to a level none had ever been before. What family is Wealth from? Uh, there's like a blacksmith waifu, right? Because like he has a master who is like another girl that has red hair. I'm not sure if she's still alive. Hephaetos? Yeah, 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 that's the one. I'm not sure if she's still alive. Is she still alive? I'm, I'm not sure. But like, I remember him, like the special power that he unlocked in season four was like, his inability to craft magic swords without having like a proper equipment. But something about like, I forget the exact mechanics, but there was like this like flashback scene where he talks to his mentor and how he's able to actually just craft wherever he wants, right? Four. It was an arduous journey testing their limits as adventurers, a grueling struggle between life and death. Belle was able to carry both of them to safety though, bringing them to floor 18 where yet another challenge awaited. You see, because Hestia entered the dungeon and unleashed her divinity inside, what? the dungeon reacted by spawning a boss monster. I genuinely don't remember this. It's like, again, like, my old channel that got deleted two years ago covered starting from season two to season three. That I still remember quite a bit, but this is season one shit where it just like does not exist in my head right now. You see, because Hestia entered the dungeon and unleashed her divinity inside, the- What does that mean to unleash your divinity? Hestia? This is Hestia. Her hair is red. This seems like a really significant important moment. She unleashed her divinity? Her true power? Every goddess can just do this? You can just like release- Gods normally suppress their divinity, but in the dungeon, did she get banned? God, like, like, dungeon hates it. Goddess can't divinity in dungeon. And that's why she can no longer come with us in the dungeons. That's why, because like, ever since like season two, season three, Hestia's always just benched back at home, you know? Just waiting and waiting. So this is the event that caused that to happen. So like, we were in like, we were in dire danger. And Hestia, for whatever reason, just unleashed her divinity to save us. Or 18, where yet another challenge awaited. You see, because Hestia entered the dungeon and unleashed her divinity inside, the dungeon reacted- Gods were never allowed to go in, but she still broke it and she unleashed her divinity to save our party. ...did by spawning a boss monster. Why did she do that? Was she trying to save us? And 
accidentally an even worse monster showed up? Cause like, what was the what was the event leading up to her just showing up and releasing divinity? It, 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 it. Okay, Bell was getting fucked up. Dude, we need to do a rewatch of this. Jesus Christ, Bell was getting fucked up. Hestia is like, oh no, I'll save you, Bell. But it turns out the dungeon is like this living organism, right? We learned in season four that there's like this mechanic where you blow the dungeon up the floors. It takes damage. The dungeon itself like reacts as if it's like, you know, it's, it's like the immune system of like a human where the white blood cells are now attacking. And instead now you spawn like a more stronger monster to get rid of the threats, right? So this is something similar. Every adventurer would then have to team up to defeat it, leading to this climactic battle showcasing everyone. Hype. Of course, Bell was the one to provide the finishing blow, but of course. that wouldn't have been possible without everyone else. So, with Bell having achieved yet another amazing accomplishment, his renown as this up and coming adventurer had spread even further. Yeah, shit like this is so hype, right? We're finally getting a bit of that acknowledgement in ReZero through, you know, Otto and, uh,. Liliana, remember in Re Zero of Subaru's acknowledgments getting like, like, like people are talking about it, and most people just consider it filler. Where's the vines? Stop yapping! This is just fucking recap! They just, ugh, you just cannot appreciate good anime. This brings us to the events of season two where- Yes, from here on, the story is a bit more clear to me, because like, again, this is like, such a fucking gap in knowledge. Like, season one is basically unknown to me. Season two and season three, I've- I, I vaguely do remember season two is like the um the war god right Apollo fucking shit up like season two started off really heavy like we were I, I like like the level of direness was on another level like we started off with the like nice little banquet we're dancing things are funny slice of life then immediately like we're under attack we're like running away from our house our place is like burnt down we settle that shit later on and then what happens then there's the whole Haruhime arc, which is amazing. Then season three was a fat arc with Vine and the existence of these intellectual monsters known as the Xenons. I forget, it's like Z something. And there was like a very important old dude who is like this all-knowing dude that knows more secrets about the labyrinth and shit, right? Xenos, that's right. That very renown starts to cause Bell trouble. It seems the god Apollo guy, has taken an interest in piece him, of shit. a lustful passion that means he'll do anything to obtain him. This leads to his- <laughs> Wait, wait, what? Wait, what, 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 It seems the god Apollo has taken an interest in him, a lustful passion that means he'll do anything to obtain him. Oh. I didn't remember that. <laughs> Was it being all sus about Bell? <laughs> I, I didn't- I remember him starting shit with us, but I didn't remember like a lustful gaze for Bell. This leads to his subsequent challenge of a war game, which <laughs> Hestia and Bell have no choice but to accept. Okay. So if Hestia loses, then Bell goes to the Apollo Familia, but mm. if Hestia wins, then we she your gets mansion. everything from Apollo. We get your mansion. First the Hestia and Cassandra and Daphne are also from Apollo's family, right? Hestia Familia seemed outclassed and outnumbered, but after a few helpful additions in the form of wealth, Lily, Makoto, and Ryu, mm. Bell's able to outsmart the enemy and defeat them. Yeah, I think there was like a the magic sword. The magic sword is just so OP. One swing and you are just throwing like avalanches, like magma, lava, fire. Fucking goes crazy. And wasn't there Ryu? Wasn't there like a significant event where Ryu was the one using the magic swords? And it was like, oh my god, an elf would use a sword. But that, but the magic sword has lore of like it being harmful against elves, right? And that was like the significant thing where, holy shit, Ryu is like throwing away her own pride of like the elf clan and whatever demise that happened with like the magic sword for Bell. I, I remember something important like that happening. Both wealth, Lily, Makoto, and Ryu, Bell's able to outsmart the enemy and defeat them, resulting in the turnover of all Apollo's assets to Hestia. Mm. This gave the Wealth's magic sword are level 6, one level below Otar from Freya's party. That's fucking crazy. And Bell is like, what, level 4? And the magic swords back at season 2, like, this shit is so powerful then. Now five-person familia, a new home to live in, but That's right. unfortunately didn't- So what is the reason that, like, Wealth and Mikoto, 
Like, I understand why Lily joined her family, but what is, like, their reasons for joining our family? Was there something bad happening over there? Because, like, Lily's family, like, they were, like, drugging her, right? There was some weird shit going on with, like, like, like the god, like, uh, getting, like, Lily and them, like, addicted and withdrawal effects, right? Like, what is their reason for joining our family? Because I thought their families are just chilling. Like, we needed more people, and then the gods and goddesses are pretty much, like, friendly with Hestia, and they felt bad for Hestia because, like, Hestia's party is, like, nothing. So they just, like, gave us donations? Is that what's going on? ...but unfortunately didn't fix Hestia's debt problem. Yeah, we have a lot of debt. Making the Familia a lot less attractive to be in. <laughs> I remember this. Peak Danmachi slice of life. I actually love Danmachi slice of life, and that's why the first episode was just so peak for me. Everyone showed up, wanted to join our family because they were hyped up. And they're like, yeah, about that? We have a like a, like a trillion dollar debt we can't pay back. And they're like, yeah, no, I'm going to leave. Attractive to be in. Now, the next oh, part of season Aisha. two. On no, no, not Aisha. This is Aphrodite. Oh, my God. Aphrodite thought she was her until the real woman showed up. Sorry, Ishtar. I keep getting that fucked up. Ishtar, not Aphrodite. Have we met Aphrodite, actually? Have we met Aphrodite? Not yet? Because, like, it's game only? They don't exist. I thought that Aphrodite would show up because, like, uh, what's it called? Season 5, we're going into, like, the goddess festival, but it's, like, the four fertility gods and goddesses, right? So, I expected, like, Freya. I expected her. Basically, just a down bad gods and goddesses, right? That's like the super horny ones probably represents fertility. Conflict with the Ishtar Familia, where yet another god tries to take Bell for themselves. That's right. This time it's not just out of indiscriminate passion or lust, though, but is instead a plot to undermine Freya. Mm. You see, Ishtar found- I didn't catch up on that. So it was very personal. It was a targeted hit towards Freya. I thought that Ishtar was just being down bad, but- Freya did show up at the end. Like, that is the highlight of season two. Bro, season two ending? Well, not, 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 not just ending, the ending of this arc. That the, just like when, when she showed up at the stairway versus Ishtar. And she just did a slap and just did a little sidestep. That was fucking cold. You see, Ishtar found that she could use Bell against her and quickly took action to do so. Yeah. In the meantime, a sub Haruhime. was being built between Mikoto and her childhood friend. Haruhime. That's right! Mikoto and Haruhime has, uh, they were childhood friends. I forgot about that. Right, right, right. Haruhime, leading to a dangerous scheme involving all three of them. Fortunately, Freya caught this with thing. before Ishtar could... <laughs> so crazy man. oh shit i ah we should do a re reaction for this shit bro oh my god this was so cold it started with thought like the entire arc she was acting like this cold calculating goddess that was so beyond everybody and everyone is like a simp for her and then the real goddess shows up and Ishtar gets all mad and she's all like breaking her face and making these faces that like a, a sexy goddess should be never making and like Freya is just so cold before Ishtar could Bitch do slap. anything so oh! she and her familia absolutely oh! annihilated her and now she's dead right a goddess has been slain has there when was the last time a god or a goddess died in the show I still don't know how that mechanic works. Like, they're when they die, they go to heaven, right? Like, like, but they're just all chilling here. So right now they're alive. Can Ishtar just show back up? How does that work? Gods and goddesses they got banished before, but they return whenever they want, cause they just kind of exist here, you know. But like, so can Ishtar cannot return? It's like a one-way ticket. Once you're deported, you cannot return. The gate is up. Freya deported Ishtar back to the heavens. That's where they go, right? It's like the heavens. So back then, sometime, a bunch of gods and goddesses, the gates were open. And they all fucking immigrated over here. And they all illegal aliens. But they're like, all right, sure, you're in. Why not? But if they die now and they get deported... No, no, you cannot come back ever again. It's like a big deal. They annihilated her. Bell also got his moment against Ishtar's captain. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> Dude, she was so creepy. She was like a 
toad. Remember her tongue, her eyes as well. She literally has the eye pupil of a toad. Frog woman and Otara just destroys her. This lady, this frog girl talks shit about Freya, right? And Otara was like, disrespect me. I don't care. Disrespect anyone else. I don't care. You talk shit about Freya. And he like, wait, I want to see this frame. Can we find it? Hold up. Let's see this. I, I, I want to see if this exists right now. Uh, Otara versus uh, Danmachi Otara season. Oh, yeah, Freen. Yeah, 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 that's her name, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 where is it? Where is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember? She was like, something happened. I, I think Mikoto used like a gravity spell. I, I don't know. She fell down, right? And, and then. <laughs> Otara shows up! Otara, Furin, Jamil, right? I don't, I don't want to play because of copyright stuff. And then it was you, you piece of shit. And then, ooh! Just catches her attack. <laughs> Boom! Giga Chad, one hand. And then he literally just like splits her in half. I'm sorry, forgive me. I know you can have my body! Ew! Ew, bro! She actually offered her body to Otara, bro. You can have my body? No. Ew. I'll let you go for a roll in the hay with me. And you're blushing at the time. Ew. 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 You can do whatever you want to me. This body. These... L <laughs> I don't remember this being so fucking weird. It's funny, bro. She's so confident in her body. His body needs like Oh look gross! Look! She's pinching her chest inwards! Look at this cleat! Look at this, you know, this booba! Even Frey, oh that's what she said. I'm more than a match for any goddess, she says. Even your Freya, she says, bro. And then Otara gets fucking mad. You dare have blasphemed our holy goddess? Ah! Barehanded! No weapon! He fucking hammer cry like fisted her! Straight up hammer fist! Oh my god! I thought that he like cut her clean down half with like an axe, but he just fucking hammer fisted her. Damn! Well, that's what you get for fucking comparing yourself with, you know, Freya. Our's captain, saving Haruhime from being sacrificed. This was how she too became a member of the Hestia familia. I love this. The Hestia arc, sorry, the Haruhime arc. I'm not sure if a lot of people enjoyed it, but the thing that I really loved about Haruhime arc was the interactions with Aisha. Aisha and Haruhime, big sister, little sister, and Aisha quote unquote being like the villain while trying to, you know, keep Haruhime safe from the inside, right? And how like Aisha called that. I remember there's a scene where Haruhime was getting taken away and Aisha had to play the bad person. And on top of like a bridge or something, when Belle was defeated, Aisha told Belle like, do you call yourself a man? Like, this is it? You call yourself a fucking hero? And, he, and she kind of like taunts him, right? She's like, come on, like get your girl back. I love that scene and everything that Aisha did for Haruhime and Belle. It was so good. Yeah bringing the head count to six now. Fast forward through a small con- Also, Aisha's fan service. Whenever she's on screen, she's not really wearing anything, so obviously there. But, but she, her personality, her personality outweighs her assets. Conflict with the Ares Familia, and that's when we get to the events of season three. Oh, fuck, I forgot these dudes. Yo, what the hell was this stupid ass arc? Remember this? Bro, this was like, a, a, like this guy's an absolute idiot. And he tried to like kidnap, who was it? Hestia? But Belle got involved with, I with Ice as well, right? Yeah, Ice also got involved. And then that's when we like fell down and got lost in a separate village. And that's what I'm talking about. That's the lore regarding the Black Dragon and Ice. I feel like that's super, super important stuff, but they're just kind of like sprinkling in, right? Just kind of setting up for this distant, distant future. Was this guy from a different nation? He was, right? This is not Orario, because like to me, the world of Damachi is just Orario. But it's more than that, right? This guy is from like a separate nation, some sort of different city. 
Aries Familia, and that's when we get to the events of Season 3. A mm -hmm. more emotional and morally complex storyline. Yeah, Season 3 is when Damachi's story got heavy. Season 1 and... No, no, Season 2, Haruhime's stuff was... It was, it was definitely more dramatic, but Season 3 was like... The entire arc was all about Vine, the discrimination against monsters, the Xenos intellectual monsters, the secrets of the labyrinth and how these intellectual monsters are created, right? Us going head to head against other actual families like Ice, right? It was such a heartbreak season. ...that introduces the intelligent sentient monsters known as the Xenos. That's right. It's here that Bell comes across the young Xenos Vine, and rather than hunt her down Vine. like how everyone expects him to, he instead chooses to protect her and go against everyone. And she's a new wife for the this season. This challenges society's beliefs that all monsters are evil, and as a result, pits Bell against those he once looked up to. Now, do we know why Vine and the Xenos exist? Was there any sort of hint about how these intellectual monsters were created? I forget. There was something very important with like a very old man on a throne. There's something very important about, like, and, and then the antagonist of this arc, who was really trying to make the uh, Xenos, like, the look bad, was some sort of guy who was a descendant of, like, a labyrinth maker, right? Oranos is the old guy name, that's right. Oranos, yeah, some sort of, like, cycling monsters, like, there's, like, <laughs> I, 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 I'm not exactly sure how monsters are created, but it's, like, this whole cycling, and, like, suddenly the monsters are evolving. Isn't it hinting that there's like evolution happening and monsters are becoming sentient? So it's while in the process of saving- Yeah, this piece of shit, bro. This guy was so annoying. What was his power? He had like an eye power, right? Being certain Xenos from captivity that Bell inadvertently makes enemies out of the Loki familia. No! A good chunk is then spent in a game of cat and mouse between Bell, his allies, and the Loki familia. Mm -hmm eventually culminating in two very epic battles. Yeah, the Minotaur! Bro, back in season one, this is the same one that got fire bolted, right? He did not die back then. He went into training, right? Asterius. And back then, he couldn't talk, right? Well, he died? Oh, that makes more sense. That makes more sense because he couldn't talk back then. He reincarnated, and now he became sentient. Like, he has, like, logic. He has intellect, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. The soul got recycled. He became a minotaur again. Which is now funny, like... What if he became, like, a different monster? I don't know exactly how the mechanics work, but, like... Um... Uh, what was it? Fucking, uh... Like... If a monster of the same race dies, do you respawn the same monster? I I'm not really sure, but it's, it's still, you know, it's, it's still a minotaur like thing, right? It's, it's a huge ass fucking minotaur and he has a name Asterius and he seeked Bell for a duel and we got our ass clapped. <laughs> we did. We, we got fucking destroyed. It was a loss, right? But like it was considered a tie or something. I forget exactly the outcome. I remember Asterius destroying us. And then it was like, you know, 1-1, one, one, you know? <laughs> well, it's a tie for now. 1-1, one, one. we'll settle it best out of three next time. The first was a conflicting duel between himself and Ice, and that challenged everything Ice herself. And the other thing about the Asterius fight, it wasn't just a personal grudge. It was about making Bell look good. The plan that I think Hermes also came up with, right? How do we get Bell's reputation back? Because there was a huge problem with how we're siding with the monsters and it's looking bad. Now Bell is like the most hated person. In order to get his reputation up, we need to make him look like the hero. In comes Astrius, who is not really part of the script, but conveniently played the role of the bad guy, right? The first was a conflicting duel between himself and Ice, and that challenged everything Ice herself stood for. It showed Bell wouldn't flop on his beliefs for anyone, while at the same time gave some well-deserved development to Ice's stoicism. The next was an absolute beat. Is I stoic? Or is she just fucking stupid? Is she a dumb blonde airhead? Or is she a stupid, like a, 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 a very enlightened stoic-like philosopher? A little bit of both. I think a little bit of both. 
The next was an absolute beatdown by Asterius, who, after single-handedly destroying most of the Loki Familia, faces off against- Oh, shit. And, bro, I remember? Bro, this is when the bunny- Dude, remember when the bunny was, like, leading the charge and Asterius was following? Didn't Ryu get just destroyed? <laughs> remember that shit? I remember a bunny running. I'm like, what's happening right now? And then something behind was coming really fast. I'm like, what, what the fuck? And then like some girls just got brutalized. I'm like, oh shit. Amelia faces off against- Wait, Can we see that? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Danmachi Astrius versus uh, Ice? Who was it? Was it this? No, 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 no. This fight was sick. Oh yeah. This fight was sick because Ice like showed us like her special techniques. Who was the girl that got destroyed? Ryu. Right, that's right. Astrid versus Ice was sick. No, and is this the bell? Where's the Ryu getting fucked up? <laughs> All Astrid seems part one. I need a part two. Battle for Bell. Where is it? Fuck, everyone just has this like Aisha versus. Let's see if part one has it because it's such a fucked up scene. <laughs> Uh, is it this? <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah! yeah. <laughs> this is. I shit got fucked up! No! The bunny! The bunny! I wanna see the bunny! Yeah, yeah, yeah! This thing! This. The bunny and, and then this dog was like leading Ostinius down from the lower floor. <laughs> and it's like everyone just like a drive through, right? It was like a drive by. Everyone just got dumpstered. It was straight up a fucking drive by. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ryu, what are you doing? Ryu, run! Ryu, no! Lucky that nobody died here. Alistair just like left. Yes, yeah, right. One horn. Not sorry, not one horn, two horns, but yeah. That's that's so funny. That that scene I, I remember just like the absurdity of all these women being brutalized. Also, the uh the arm of Astrius, did he cut that off himself or did Bell do that? How did the arm injury happen? Was this like an injury of like honor or did Bell get the best of him? Ice cut it? Oh, okay. Okay, okay, I, I, so Ice, well, Loki family had a lot of help, right? There's like more than Ice, but the Ice versus, bro, that fight was fucking hype. Against Bell in front of everyone. He was the reincarnation of the Minotaur Bell fought in season yeah, one. Yeah, reincarnation. And while his rematch did result in Bell's defeat, the heroic display of it recovered most of the public's opinion on him. And remember, every time the bells start ringing, remember, his name is Bell, and if the soundtrack... You start hearing bells, it's like the bells of heroes. Like, it's, a, it's supposed to be like him becoming a hero, right? Sometimes, like, it, like, manifests in his fist. Whenever you hear the bells and you see, like, this, like, like this visual effect happening, he's, like, reaching hero status, like, a buff is happening, right? Leavitt recovered most of the public's opinion on him. So, despite this being Bell's first major loss, it's not like there wasn't anything to gain from it. Bell had done enough to achieve level 4, the people no longer thought of him as a traitor, and mm -hmm. a newfound desire to grow now manifested within him. Rabbit's foot. He was no longer solely occupied by a desire to reach eyes, but now has the new goal of creating a world where humans and Xenos can live together. Equality. That, and be strong enough to face Asterius in a rematch. So, this adds several new layers to Bell's character as he becomes quite a bit more mature than how he used to be. Something best reflected in Season 4 as his approach to what he believes in becomes a lot more serious. That being the case, it's here that we get back into the raw, the unparalleled danger of the dungeon, all while learning more about best girl Ryu. Yeah, Ryu had an amazing arc. I love this season. I'm not sure if this is my favorite season. It just might be. Like, so yeah, Season 3 was dramatic. Very serious, heavy, for sure. Season four was like despair and terror of the lower floors, but not even just the lower floors, because this was the lower floor, you know? This like blue area, this was the lower floor. But we actually went even lower, right? We went 
even lower accidentally due to the juggernaut and the whole mechanic of how if you damage the dungeon and the dungeon will have this system where it's trying to you know sustain itself and fend off against the intruders and summons this fucking insane monster so not only was there a floor monster here which was that like f swimming leviathan like creature there is also you know the uh juggernaut which fucked everybody up and then we fell down even lower and then it was just ryu and bell just thugging it out now i have a question about how the towers work in in danmachi i have a very important question guys all right you ready so this is Orario, and we have a tower, right? Right? I never understood how the tower goes up, but we say lower floors. Why do we say lower floors instead of upper floors? Like, like you can only go up. A tower is just a building. <laughs> See, this is, this is how shitty... This is how shitty my knowledge of Damachi is. I never understood this. And I just went along with it. And I'm like, are we just like... Whenever we say like we're going lower floors, everyone just accepts it that we're just going up. <laughs> I never knew how this shit worked. And I'm like, okay, this is how it works. Thank you. This makes it a lot more clearer. <laughs> And that's the same thing with fucking Wistoria, you know? Wistoria also has a fucking tower like that. And I'm like, well, shit, we never went up the tower. We're always going down. What the hell is happening? It's the same setup. The gods and goddesses, like, live up the tower. Has anyone ever went up the tower? Can you even go up the tower? Where's the entrance of the dungeon? Well, like, is the entry point the same? Like, there's an entry point here? And, like... The dungeon is like below. Like like Hestia lives up here. Hestia lives up here. Sorry, sorry. Freya, Freya, Freya lives up here. Hestia lives in a mansion. Freya, Freya lives up here. Hestia is so fucking broke. She had to live in a fucking shack until season two, right? So dungeon is a big hole. Does it start? Entrance is a ground floor. Where is the ground floor though? Is the ground floor related to the tower? Or is it completely separate? Like, I don't know, the entrance is like here somewhere else and it's just like all the way down. Is that, that's, that's like the dungeon. Like, is there any connection to the tower and the, and the dungeon? Or nah? I don't know how that shit works. And that's like our dungeon, right? And like, if we look at here, there's like other cities as well, right? There's like the other city where they were trying to like kidnap, you know, fucking Bell, Ice, whatever happened at the end of season two, right? Do they have their own dungeons? Or are we the only one with the dungeon down below? Like, we have a dungeon down there. What about other cities? Do they have dungeons? Do they have towers? Do they have their own gods and goddesses that don't exist? Is it only Orario that has gods and goddesses and other cities, they don't have that? There's only one dungeon, but it has more than two entrances. Yeah, yeah, I remember there was something being like other entrances. So we, Orario is very, other cities have gods, but our city is like the most important because of the existence of the dungeon system, right? Hmm, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because like this guy, right? This, this is the war god. That was, that was the idiot, the orange hairy guy that was trying to like kidnap people, right? But only Orario has dungeons. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, and we can level up, right? How, how do they level up? How do other countries... How, how the fuck can they level up? Like, we have just this dungeon to, like, level up and get good shit. Like, these people, what the fuck are they doing? They should probably start coming to our place and seek out our dungeon to level up, right? I don't know. ...into the raw, unparalleled... That being the case, it's here that we get back into the raw, unparalleled danger of the dungeon, all while learning more about best girl Ryu. Mm where before she only had a supporting role in a lot of the conflicts, her tragic backstory now comes to the forefront. That backstory was so messed up. So it's while Bell and his party are on an expedition to the lower floors that they're suddenly caught up in the middle of Ryu's revenge plot. Her familia had been wiped out by the actions oh, of another, and Ryu not. was just eliminating those that remained from it. One of them was actually trying to recreate the very- <laughs> This fucker, dude, I just- 
I hate this guy so much, dude. He just kept living like a cockroach. He kept living. I it's just like trash like him just live forever. One of them was actually trying to recreate the very events that wiped out Ryu's familia, spawning the calamity known as the Juggernaut, a fearsome monster. Cause like this guy did the same shit before, right? He literally did the same shit before, and Ryu's familia got messed up and Ryu pretty much had to kill her own best friend, right? I forget exactly what happened. Yeah, first time was an accident that they realized could be repeated, but it was still on them. And Ryu was going on a, like a, I'm a Ven an Avenger stuff, but didn't she have to kill her own friend? There was like an event where I, I was it someone really close to her and like, they were the last remaining people, and like, it was like one sacrifice play, yeah. And she's the only survivor, and she bears the guilt. That acts as the dungeon's defense mechanism. Should the dungeon ever receive damage it considers excessive, then the Juggernaut will spawn and eliminate the cause of it. I love this mechanic. Like, this exists, like, that, the fact that a dungeon is like a living organism, and has this, like, immune system of, like, uh, threat alert, threat alert, we need a big monster to take out the, uh, the threats. So, this is the monster Bell and Ryu initially face off against, leading to their literal downfall to the dungeon's deep floors. It's an area only the most Very veteran deep. adventurers would ever step foot in, since the monsters within are all incredibly powerful. Combine this with the juggernaut still trying- Humans are the real monsters? No. It's those fucking filthy demi-humans. <laughs> I'm sounding like a racist isekai character, but this is a fucking- this is not a human. <laughs> Trying to hunt them, and oh what you boy. get is yet another grueling struggle for survival. It's pretty much like the first one from Season 1, except that was Times Minecraft 10. and this is Bloodborne. Yeah. So, Ryu understood that survival with both of them was unlikely, and as a result tried to separate and sacrifice herself. It was a way of thinking that conflicted directly with Bell since he was fully determined to make it out together. Mm -hmm. It was this unyielding determination that eventually- That, that, that effect, bro. The bell start ringing. The visual effect that this starts happening. And he also unlocked Argo Vesta in this season, right? Yeah. And, um... The Argo Vesta? Wait! We're skipping ahead! There, there was a part where, there, remember the sentient slime monster? Oh shit. Yo, you re remember the sludge slime monster? <laughs> what the hell is that guy all about? He was a fucking freak. That, yeah, Moss Huge. <laughs> Moss Huge was a threat, dude. That guy was smart as fuck. And then we use Argo Vesta on his ass. Actually resonated with Ryu since to go again. There was also the mermaid girl. The mermaid girl was very essential. She was another Xenos. She helped um, heal Belle when like we got her like arm cut off and shit. I forget exactly what happened, but there's like a pretty much lethal injury. Belle got thrown into the water. Mermaid shows up. Hype. Against the odds and uphold his ideals no matter what. Well, that was genuinely inspiring. It's a hero. It completely shattered Ryu's pre-existing beliefs of ideal versus reality since Belle was able to make his ideal become reality. And that is what a hero is. When an ideal becomes a reality. True hero, bro. This brought back memories of the idealism Ryu once shared with her captain and showed her for the first time ideals can in fact shape reality. So, Belle's triumph at the end wasn't just a physical victory over the dungeon, but was also a confirmation of everything Ryu's late captain stood for. It was a reflection of the beliefs Elise died holding on to. Elise, that was her name. So, in the end, Bell held on to his ideals through great adversity. Ryu got to see what it truly meant to be a hero, and the others of the Hestia Familia grew through overcoming several challenges of- Yeah, this bro! This was when, you know, wealth was popping off, and he had this whole memory unlock of like, wait, I can just craft a fucking magic sword in here. ...several challenges of their own. The season then ends with everyone being rescued. Bell just- That's right, Vina did show up. But Bell was like unconscious, and you know, there was never a time to actually like meet, connect one to one. Wonder if Wene is gonna show up in season five? Probably not. I don't know what season five is gonna do. It's just Harvest Festival, right? Sounds like it's a slice of life arc.
Maybe it's gonna get super serious, but so far it's looking like fun festival date, which I'm all for because the slice of life elements, I really enjoy that in Danmachi too. Sometimes like it's way too heavy. Like season three, season four, it was so, so heavy and depressing. It was amazing though, but now it's like, oh, thank you. We're getting a little bit more just, you know, casual times, hanging out with the rest of people. What's going on in the world of Danmachi? Being rescued. Bell just about halfway through level 4, and Ryu now having a renewed sense of justice. Yeah, and she fumbles Bell. <laughs> you had it all, girl? You could have taken what is yours, but you didn't, so you can't... Like, like, it's on you. You fumbled this. She also finally falls into the- She literally runs away. She was clutching her heart when Bell was, like, being all affectionate to Ryu. Ryu was like, oh, what is this feeling? And she runs away. <laughs> It's like, alright, well, Seer's gonna get ahead of you now. I like Bell Camp. This will come into play during the events of Season 5, since mm -hmm. Seer's forward movements will go to challenge everyone else in that Dato. camp. It seems her and Freya will be becoming- Yo, this date, this date episode's gonna be fucking peak. Next week, man. Oh, man. The main focus in the next arc. Something I'm genuinely excited to see happen, since yeah. for far too long, Freya's Freya. been on the sidelines. Secret! So- that's a brief recap of every season of- Wonder if we're gonna see Ice at the festival at all. I, 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 I would hope so, like, bro, Ice has been benched for the longest time! Why Bell so dripped out? Because the blonde elf. <laughs> the blonde elf guy, bro, that like kidnapped Bell at the end of last episode? He gonna groom Bell to make sure that he knows how to do his hair, he's wearing properly. 20 reps of, you know, delivering the fucking bouquet of flowers, 20 reps of holding the girl's fucking shopping bags, making him like the ultimate, like, date candidate. Headlines. So, that's a brief recap of every season of Danmachi, hopefully catching you up to speed with what happened in it. Yeah. If it didn't, you liked the video, then feel free to leave a like and subscribe. Hell yeah! Thank you, Mr. Annie News, for clearing up a lot of the confusions that I had going into Danmachi, because again, I've been just so focused on Reezer, but here's a link to his video. Please check out Annie News' content, like his video if you haven't, and I will see you next time.